So um, I've been in business now for myself for about nine years. Prior to that, I uh, worked for a Fortune 50 company for about 24 years and I hit that corporate glass ceiling and decided to go out and do something on my own. Um, after about four years in business and my practice starting to grow, I realized that, man, I cannot do this all by myself. I'm going to have to get some help now. So I, I did the traditional thing and I went out and I started advertising for people to assist me. And as Sean mentioned earlier, the problem I ran into then was that the people that I would like to have work for me wanted too much money to work, me being a small client. And if they accepted a job to work for me at a lower rate, I couldn't keep them very long because shortly thereafter, as soon as the next job came along that was paying a dollar more per hour, they were out of here. So I'd wasted time on recruiting, training, and then just to see them go out the door. So it wasn't long thereafter, I came across an ad on Facebook talking about uh, remote servicing. And I was like, hmm, let me check it out. So I called and the company turned out to be Integrity. And so I, I talked with the people from there and like what I heard, and they gave me a person to talk to that uh, gave them a very good reference. You know, I expect them to give me a person that had good references for them, but it, it sounded good and everything he said made sense to me. So I decided to give them a shot. Now, I will tell you from experience, um, the best thing to do is to get involved and get your staff earlier during the year. Unfortunately, my Hindi is not very good. And so sometimes I run into a little bit of a communication issue. And I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that we here in America use a lot of slang terminology that is foreign, no pun intended, to the people in India. So I've, I've learned to work on that and to recognize when maybe I say something that doesn't really translate into what their understanding may be. So that's helped me to build a better relationship with my staff. Um, I've also, in that whole process, been able to develop additional training mechanisms for my staff when I see it looks like they don't quite understand exactly what it is that I uh, want them to do. So we, we've implemented a process where I have weekly meetings with my staff uh, for about an hour at a time. We go over any issues or concerns that I may have. I try to address anything that they may have concerns about and um, it's worked very well. It's been a very enjoyable experience. I'm looking to potentially add another staff maybe next year as soon as I can figure out exactly what it is that I want to transition to them. But I definitely will be increasing the hours of my existing offshore staff. Sure. Yeah. Um, it's a very robust process. It's almost, yeah. well, it's just like a job interview that someone will come into an office to interview for a job here in the U.S. Um, I get to look at the client's resume, or excuse me, the um, person's in resumes, uh, and then we set up a time to talk with them. I get to interview them, ask them questions, have them ask me questions and determine if I think it will be a good fit based on what my needs are at the time. Okay, well, um, I saw they had, there were some, like you said, apprehension about that. Um, one of the things that helped allay my fears was that you gave me a couple of people that I could call and talk to about what their experience was. And they shared some very good information with me. Um, also, you know, did a little research on integrity to find out if there were any issues in terms of any uh, things I might be concerned about, such as uh, fraudulent practices or anything like that. And the information came back very good for the company. So I was like, okay, well, well maybe it's worth giving this thing a shot. So uh, at that point, I tried it out. I went with a minimal number of hours initially just to see how things would work and I found that things work very well and I've gradually been increasing those hours each year.
Sure. You know, even though there's a fairly huge time difference between the United States and India, there is this sweet spot of opportunity where the time frame overlaps. And that's the time I'm usually having meeting with my uh, staff or communicating with them. So, and usually these are fairly short, brief communications. You know, we only take an hour for the most part when we have our weekly meetings. And then um, they're very responsive to communicating to with me via email or Skype. Um, also, if there's something urgent, I can call them via Skype and get in touch with them fairly easily during their work window. And they, they have fairly long work windows. I think most of them work at least 10, possibly sometimes during tax season, 12 hours a day. So they are available. Uh, haven't had any issues in terms of getting in touch with people. And they've been very responsible and responsive. And they communicate with me frequently through email as well. Well, you know, I think foremost and most importantly, you have to determine exactly what your needs are and what roles that you're trying to fill with a particular service, okay? And then once you've decided what that is, I think you can kind of script out, okay, what kind of background and what kind of experience am I looking for from the staff that I need to hire? Like for me, you know, it was, I needed somebody that was able to prepare taxes, that was familiar with Pro Series, that had experience with uh, QuickBooks, but also had the ability to work with softwares that would allow them to convert PDF documents into Excel and, and, and those kind of things. So, you know, identify what it is that you're looking for. And then when you start your interview, make sure that the people that you're talking to have those abilities, okay? Um, the, the other thing is, um, and uh, this is probably true for them as it is for me, um, I've got an accent. <laughs> and some of the staff in India has accents as well. And for some of the staff that I worked with initially, I had a much more difficult time understanding what they were saying to me because of the heavy accents. After a while, I kind of got used to it, but that took a little bit of transition and training for me to work through. So I, I would suggest that, you know, you make sure that um, you're able to communicate and that um, you all have a good understanding. The, the other thing I would tell you is, and I have to do this all the time, is kind of watch the slang that you're using because a number of times it doesn't translate when it goes across the water and something gets lost in the translation. So just make sure that um, your staff understands exactly what you mean.